In this video, you will learn how to solve problems involving quadratic equations. In this particular lesson, you will learn three different types of word problems in which you can apply quadratic equations to solve. So the first kind is involving numbers. So here we have two consecutive positive integers that have a product of 132. Find the two numbers. So to begin, you want to establish your variables. So here we have two different numbers, and these numbers are consecutive positive integers. So we have two numbers, and the first number we can call x. And if the first number is x, then the next number is going to be x plus 1, because that is how you find the next consecutive number. Right? So if the first number was 5, the next consecutive number would be one more than that, which would be six. Okay, we don't know what those numbers are, but we do know that if the first one is x, the next one is found by adding one to that first number. So then from here, it says that they have a product of 132. Now when it says product, that means multiply. So when I multiply x times x plus one, that product will equal 132. Now to solve this, I can begin by distributing. So x times x and x times one would be x squared plus x. And then from here, I want to set this equal to zero. So if I bring the 132 to the left side, I can do that by subtracting 132. And now we have x squared plus x minus 132 equals zero. Now at this point, I can solve different ways. I could either use a quadratic formula, I can use completing the square, or I can factor. Now factoring in this case would be the simplest because what I can do is I can do two sets of parentheses. The first one would be x, and then the first term of the other part would be x as well because x times x would give me x squared. And then to get 132, we need two numbers that would multiply to give me negative 132 and that would add to give me a positive one for that middle term. So if I do a positive 12 and negative 11, those would multiply to give me one, negative 132 and would add to give me a positive one for the middle term. And we see that typed up right here. And at this point, I can now set each part equal to zero. So either x plus 12 equals zero or x minus 11 equals zero. I can then solve each one for x. This first one, subtract 12. We have x equals negative 12. And then over here, we can add 11 to both sides, and we have x equals positive 11. So my two options are x equals negative 12 or x equals positive 11. Now looking back at the original problem, it says that we're trying to find two consecutive positive integers, which means we want this positive 11. So x would be 11, and then the next number is one more than that. So 11 plus one would give me 12. So these are two consecutive positive numbers who have a product of 132. The second type of problem is dealing with area. Now when you deal with area, you need to make sure that you know your area formulas. So your area formulas, uh, remember for a triangle, the area is going to be one half, so one half times base times height. And then for a rectangle, the area formula is area equals base times height, and that's actually for any parallelogram. And then we also have circles, so the area of a circle, we do a equals pi times the radius squared. So these are the three main ones. Uh, you maybe could see a trapezoid. A trapezoid, you can find the area by doing the median times the height. So median times height, or you can think of this as um, base one plus base two over two. That is your median. Then multiply that by your height. So same thing for trapezoid, median times height, or you simply average the two bases and then multiply that by the height. 
So these are important to know for this type of problem because we're dealing with area. So in this particular problem, we are dealing with a rectangle. And it says the base of a rectangle is six inches longer than twice the height. And the area of the rectangle is 56 inches squared. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. So you can draw a picture if you want. And here we have our rectangle. And it says the base is six inches longer than twice the height. So if our height is going to be x, then the base is six inches longer than twice that. So twice that would be two times x. And then six inches longer than that would be having to add six to that. So the height would be x and the base would be two x plus six. And to find the area of a rectangle, we do base times the height. Now from here, we can use this formula and plug in what we know and we can try to find the unknown. So we know the area is 56 square inches. So area is 56. I can plug 56 in for A. And the base is 2x plus 6. So I can put 2x plus 6 in for B. And the height is x. So I put an x in for H. So I'm going to have 56 equals x times 2x plus 6. Now from here, I can try to solve. So to do this, I can distribute the x to both terms. That would give me 2x squared plus 6x. And then typically, we want to set this equal to 0. So we want to bring this 56 over to the right side. I can do that by subtracting 56 from both sides. Now we have 0 equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 56. Now at this point, I can solve and I could use factoring, I could use quadratic formula, or I could try to use completing the square. Now the first thing that I notice when I see this is that each term could be divided by 2. If I do that, it's going to make it much simpler to work with. So let's divide everything by 2. And when I do that, I now have x squared plus 3x minus 28 equals zero. So now from here I can check to see if factoring would work and this one would. I can factor by getting x plus 7 times x minus 4 because 7 and negative 4 would multiply to give me negative 28 and would add to give me a positive 3. So once I factor I can now set each part equal to zero. So either x plus 7 equals zero or x minus 4 equals 0. And then I can solve each one. This first one I subtract 7. So I have x equals negative 7. This other one I can add 4 to get x equals 4. So x equals negative 7 or x equals positive 4. Now the question is which one is it equal to? Well looking at the context we are dealing with the dimensions of a rectangle and height and base of a rectangle needs to be positive, okay? Because there's no such thing as a negative height. So what that means is that this negative seven is not a solution to this particular problem. So four is gonna be my x value. So four is the value of the height, and then the base is two times four plus six, which would be 14. So the height is 4 inches and the base is 14 inches. So we have learned how to solve number problems. We've learned how to solve area problems. Next we're going to learn how to solve work problems. So for this particular work problem, we are told that working alone, it takes Stephanie two hours longer to shovel the driveway than it does Jim. Working together, they can shovel the driveway in six hours. How long would it take Stephanie or Jim to complete the driveway without the other helping? Now with work problems, remember we want to create a table. So we've learned this in the past and we're just now using the context of quadratic equations to solve this particular work problem. 
So what I can do is create a table and I have Stephanie and Jim as my row headings. And then my column headings, I have work rate times time equals the work done. So for this one, the time would be six hours because they're both working six hours. All right, so that is six hours for Stephanie and six hours for Jim. Now the tricky part is gonna be getting this work rate. So this work rate for Stephanie, it says it takes Stephanie two hours longer to shovel the driveway than it does Jim. All right, so for work rate, um, typically we're going to do one over the amount of time it takes to complete the job. All right, so it's gonna be one over something for both Stephanie and for Jim. And what it's gonna go on top of is the amount of time it takes to complete the job. So it says Stephanie takes two hours longer to shovel the driveway than it does Jim. So if Jim's time, Jim's time equals X, then Stephanie's time would be X plus two because it's two hours longer for Stephanie. So Jim's time or his work rate would be one over the time it takes which would be one over X. And then Stephanie's time would be one over her time. So uh, her work rate is one over her time, which would be one over X plus two. So this is my setup for the beginning part of the table. And then to find the work completed by each individual, you take the work rate, multiply it by the time. So for Stephanie, we have one over X plus two, 1 over x plus 2 times 6, or 6 over 1, which would simply be 6, right, 1 times 6, or 6 on the top, over x plus 2 times 1, or x plus 2. So her work completed would be 6 over x plus 2. And then Jim's time is, or his work done, is going to be his work rate times his time. So for Jim, we have 1 over x times 6, or 6 over 1, same thing. So one times six is six, x times one is x. So the work completed would be six over x. So this is what my table would look like. Now from here, I can create my equation. So I know that if I combine Stephanie's portion of the job plus Jim's portion, that will equal the entire job being completed. So when they work together, Stephanie will complete part of it, Jim will complete the other part of it, and together they finish the entire job. So if I take Stephanie's portion, so her work completed, which is six over X plus two, add that with Jim's portion, which is six over X, that will equal the entire, the entire job, which is one. So my equation is gonna be six over X plus two plus six over X equals one. So that is my equation, which I see typed up right here. Now from this point, the simplest way to proceed would be to eliminate the fractions. To make that happen, I can multiply every term by the least common denominator. So notice that we have a denominator of x plus 2 and a denominator of x. So we have two different things represented. We have x plus 2's and we have x's. So we know we need at least one x plus 2 and at least one x. All right, so notice there's only one of each. So when I find the, the least common denominator, I need to take just one of each because that is the most I see with each fraction. So my least common denominator would be x plus two times x. So I multiply every term by x plus two times x. And that is what I see right here in this next step. So I take that six over x plus two multiply it by x times x plus 2. I take the 6 over x, multiply that as well by x times x plus 2. And then I take 1, multiply that as well by x times x plus 2. Now from here I can simplify. So for the first part, the x times x plus 2 times 6 over x plus 2, the x plus 2 would divide with the x plus 2 down here. That gives me 6 times x for that first term. 
the second term right here with the 6 over x times the x times x plus 2. The x would cancel with the x. That would give me x plus 2 times 6. And then over here we have x times x plus 2. I can distribute. We would have x squared plus 2x. So now from this point, I can continue to solve because the fractions are eliminated. And we see everything typed up right here. Now from this point, I want to distribute the 6 to both terms. So 6 times x and 6 times 2 to get 6x plus 12. So now we have 6x plus 6x. That's going to be 12x. But 12x plus 12 equals x squared plus 2x. And I want to get everything equal to 0, which means I need to subtract 12x from both sides to get that gone, and then subtract 12 from both sides to get the 12 gone. And that leaves me with 0 on the left side, and then on the right side we have x squared, and then 2x minus 12x would be negative 10x, and then minus 12. And we see that typed up right here. Now we need to solve that quadratic equation and we can do this by factoring if it works. We can use completing the square or the quadratic formula. Now this one does not work with factoring. So we're left to either completing the square or the quadratic formula. You can choose whichever method you prefer, but from here I will proceed with completing the square. Completing the square would not be too difficult because this middle term right here is an even number, which makes this more simple to work with. So to do completing the square, what I do is I need to get the negative 12 to the right side. So I do that by adding 12 to both sides. So we put the 12 back over here on the right side. And then I'm going to fill in the left side to, uh, to make a perfect square. So I'm going to add something to the left side and to the right side. So this number that I'm adding is found by taking the negative 10, this middle term, taking half of that and then squaring it. So half of negative 10 is negative 5, and then I square negative 5, so negative 5 times negative 5, that gives me a positive 25. So I add 25 to both sides, and I chose that because on the left side, that's going to give me... Um, x minus 5 times x minus 5 because x times x is x squared negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25 for the middle term and negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10 for the middle term so this would be the same thing as x minus 5 squared that's equal to 37 and at this point, I can solve for x by taking the square root of both sides. I'm left with x minus 5 equals a positive or negative square root of 37. And then I can add 5 to both sides. We now have x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 37. And we see all of that work typed up right here. Now the square root of 37 is approximately 6.08. So what I have is 5 plus 6.08, which would be 11.08, or 5 minus 6.08, which is a negative 1.08. Now remember the context of this equation. This x value is our time that it takes for Jim to complete the job. So a negative 1.08 hours would not make any sense. So in the context of this problem, this negative answer we could ignore. So Jim's time to complete the job is 11.08 hours. And then Stephanie's time to complete was 2 hours more than that. So her time to complete is 13.08 hours. So we can use this quadratic equation to solve to get my solutions. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.